Welcome back. Today I'm going to show you how to de-rust a fuel tank with some citric acid. So we have the Solex fuel tank here and not sure if you'll be able to catch this but it's completely rotted inside. It's completely rusted out. I do want to keep this fuel tank because it's original and has the sticker that belongs on there which adds some uh, patina and it's a bit of a cool factor so i'm going to try uh, an old trick in the book well it's not that old but um try to resolve this rust with citric acid so basically uh citric acid you can buy that at uh, uh, drugstores or in my case i get it from a brewing supply store so citric acid is apparently used in some kind of brewing process so you can get it there so what i do is add some citric acid in here i'll show you in a minute and then just some uh, tap water or maybe even rain water because that doesn't have any calcium in it and the citric acid will also react to the calcium and then just let it soak for a while uh, depending on the state of the tank you could just well after cleaning it out you could just run it like that. In other cases, you might need some tank cure. I've never used it because I've never needed it before, but maybe this will be the first time. We'll see. So first I'm going to add citric acid and then some water and then just leave it for a week, maybe even longer, depending on the state of it. So let's do just that. The citric acid is in there. I don't really have a rule on how much to use. I go by feel. If the tank is very rusty inside, use some more. As you can see, I've also <laughs> spilled a lot. I've also added a fuel line to the back of the fuel tank, just so in case this tips over, it doesn't, just doesn't spill everything out. Hopefully it does keep it in the tank. So all we have left to do now is add some water and wait. Give it a bit of a shake, just so everything mixes. Whoa! Yeah. And that's it. Now just leave it for maybe a week and I will see you then. It's been a couple of weeks. I've actually refilled it once uh, because it was pretty dirty and I thought maybe it has worked out. The, the second fill up has sat for a week, I think. And you can clearly tell it's a lot better, but I will drain it and show you guys. So not sure if you're able to tell this, but all the rust has been out. It's still not perfect. Uh, there's still some crud in, but most of it is out. Hopefully it should at least work for a bit uh, for starting the bike. So let's see if we can remove the bottom. There should be a little filter in here. So hopefully clean that out or install a new, a new thing and then get some fuel, wash it out with some old fuel and put some fuel in after that and hopefully we can get this thing running. We've got the fuel drain out, it's this plug and this holds a little mesh filter that is actually in front of the fuel line, the fuel pickup, if you can see it here. So just just you should be able to pull this thing out and we have a new one here just jam that in and the hollow part should just slide over the pick of the tube like this we're just going to clean out this nut and then reinstall everything wash everything out with old fuel and then add some new fuel let's also open this fuel pump so we can put it in the ultrasonic cleaner this is an older style fuel pump. I've never seen the internals of these. Ooh, they actually have a fuel filter. Nice. A lot of dirt in here. I don't think I'll open the fuel filter in the ultrasonic cleaner because of the heat. The plastic doesn't mix very well. Let's get the top off as well. I'm going to throw it in completely in the ultrasonic cleaner. 
You have the new parts, new backing plate, new membrane, and the new balls that uh, need to be in here. So we have two balls and two of these seats. This thing has already been disassembled and in the ultrasonic cleaner, so it's a bit cleaner than it was before. I was given the tip to get the old seats out with a little wood screw. So basically, get the screw into the top part here, and then you should be able to pull that out. I think this was the way. So for some reason these valve seats are completely stuck. I've actually checked with the fuel pump of my 3800 and it's actually the same issue. So I think that might be the problem why my fuel pump keeps failing. I think there's only one of the two balls that is working because the other ones are stuck. So I'm going to try and take a small drill and drill drill them out and maybe go up one drill just until we have the correct diameter for these seats hopefully i don't destroy these otherwise i will have to go looking for new ones hey that's one of the seats i'm going to keep drilling hopefully i can get it out well i think i might have ruined it not sure the drill caught on the last piece was in there and actually took out some aluminium with it so the hole in the bottom of the fuel pump is now a bit bigger <sighs> is that an issue i'm not sure as you can see the drill this is the tiny drill but it fits all the way in i'm not sure if this will actually stop the pump from working i will have to check so i did, did some measuring the valve seat is five millimeters and the hole i've created just over four and a half so we still have half a millimeter of spare so i think i'm going to just try it i'm going to push the seat in theoretically it can't fall out so hopefully it still works so just take the blunt side of the drill and just push the seat down until you hear it click, that's there should be a little ridge that catches the seat. So let's put in the first ball, and then the second valve seat. You can still hear it going up and down. And the second one, well, this one will obviously go up and down a lot put this thing back together somewhat together there we go and then I'm going to clean the fuel filter put it back on and I think that should be a rebuilt fuel pump let's go ahead and install the fuel pump so first the plastic piece and then the membrane and then we can put the pump on There, fuel pump installed. That's one part of the fuel system. Now let's get to the carburetor. So here we have an absolute filthy and jammed carburetor. Well, it's not completely jammed, but it doesn't work at all. So let's get to disassembling this thing and put everything in the ultrasonic cleaner and then rebuild it. So first let's take the main jet out. This should be a yeah, 28 jet. With the new triple port cylinder, we will probably go for a 30, as suggested by the supplier. There we have the choke and a washer to keep the choke in place. Get the spring off. And the troll slide should slide out. There we go very crusty so that's one completely disassembled Solex carburetor let's get to rebuilding the carburetor uh, let's start off with the easiest I'm going to replace this uh, the 28 the stock 28 jet with a size 30 that's what they advise you to do when running the triple port cylinder 
They need a bit more fuel. Let's put the choke lever back in. I guess this is it. Open and close. And then we have the washer. The spoon. And the little C-clip. This will be a tricky one. I can pull the spring down with two hands, but I can't hold it with one to get the clip on. Oh, I think I got it. And then we have the throttle. Yeah, I think it's like this. So the spring here. Yeah, this is it. Okay, cool. Now there's just uh, two things left to do and replace these old gaskets. So let's first try to get this one out. There we go. Now one more. On the other side for the fuel inlet. If I can get it out at least. Come on. Can we fit a screw in and try to pull it out? The inlet and exhaust manifold is all mounted up. Let's put the carb on and then the fuel lines. So we got everything all mounted up again. The next step will be the fuel tank. That will be for the next episode. So we got the carburetor and the fuel pump rebuilt. The engine is assembled. So the last thing we need is fuel tank. And then we should be able to get this thing running. So if you thought this was helpful, consider subscribing uh, because there will be more. Consider leaving a like if you liked it, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.